2021 was arguably a pretty shit year, but what it was definitely good for was for Linux. Not because there was a massive boost in users or gaming is now suddenly perfect and everything works exactly like on Windows or because of any individual piece of software that was released. The reason why 2021 was such a great year for Linux is because of all the criticism it actually received. Now, we can argue about the semantics of these problems and the severity of them. Oh, it's not an Ubuntu problem, it's actually a GNOME problem. Oh, if you know how to do this fix, it stops being a problem. But what's important here is there is actually a problem. And I don't expect every single Linux user to be able to articulate specifically what application is having a problem when they don't know everything they actually have installed, when you have something like Ubuntu, for example. Or I don't expect every single user to know how to fix every single problem they have on their system when sometimes those problems are actually pretty advanced. And for a good part of it, it's actual useful criticism from people who know what they're talking about from new and advanced Linux users alike. Not the typical, oh, Linux bad because Windows good, that you'll see from someone who's literally never used Linux in their entire life. People who are using Linux who are questioning whether the current experience is the way that it should be. Oh, this is the way that GNOME currently works, or the way that KDE currently works, or anything else currently works. But is this the way that it actually should work? Is this actually a good experience, or are we just handicapping ourselves because that's just what we want to do? Or are we just handicapping ourselves because this is the way that we've always done stuff? And while I certainly hope this continues into 2022, I know that I'm going to be doing exactly that on this channel, shining a light on these applications that I feel like have serious problems that should be addressed. Obviously, just being critical of applications isn't enough to actually get anything done. It really only gets us so far. So if 2021 was the year of Linux criticism, what I want to see is 2022 become the year of Linux improvement. Because after nearly 900 videos on this channel, there is something I can see really clearly in the FOSS world. Most projects out there focus on shiny new features that make their projects stand out while sidelining the less shiny but more fundamental changes. One great example of this is obviously GIMP. So only now with GIMP 4 are we finally seeing multi-layer selection. You know, that feature that's been requested for about 20 years. Something that could overnight massively improve the workflow of that application. But what's more interesting is adding in these new tools and new effects and all this fun stuff that makes the application stand out. And this isn't just a problem with GIMP. I can show you video editors like Caden Live, Shotcut. I can show you other image editors. I can show you web browsers. I can show you text editors. So many FOSS applications have this exact same problem. Obviously, this improvement doesn't just happen because I say I want it to happen. Obviously, there is real work that needs to be done. Now, I can say to everyone, oh, just become a developer. Learn Python, learn C, learn Rust, learn Java, learn whatever language it is that your favorite project actually uses. And obviously this is important because without developers, the work is never actually going to be done. But there are more than just devs in this equation. Most FOSS projects out there receive little or basically no financial support. So if you are financially well off enough to do so, I fully encourage you to go and support your favorite projects financially. Whether it's OBS, GNOME, GIMP, doesn't matter what it is, I'm not gonna tell you what projects you actually should go and support. If you like a project and you are well off enough to do so, go and do so. Now, obviously, a lot of people out there aren't going to be. So don't feel pressured that you should go and support the project when you don't have enough to pay your own bills. So if you are one of those people and you're also not a developer, it's not like you just have to sit around and then wait for things to get better. There is actually something you can do, even though a lot of people are going to sort of undervalue this work. And that is shining a light on a problem, whether that's submitting an issue or a bug report, or in my case, actually making a video about something and showing that, yeah, this is actually a problem that should be addressed. I cannot tell you how many times I've made a video about some random script, the developer found that video, and then realized, oh wait, these actually were problems that should be addressed, 
and then over time they'd been fixed and the application became seriously better. Take for example the Arch install script, which when it first came out was completely useless. Now it's actually really, really good. Now not everything is a problem in the same way as I press a certain letter and the application crashes. Sometimes it's more of just a difference in vision of the application. Two perfectly valid ways to approach the future of the application, but your vision and the developer's vision just don't align. And in cases like that, there's not really much you can do. But whether it's a bug that should be addressed, a feature that people have been asking for for a while, or anything else that might improve the project, there's no harm in adding your voice to the pile and showing that there is more support behind this actually being done. Because with more support, it will encourage the developers to actually work on that thing. If the maintainer doesn't want to see something happen, it doesn't matter what else is happening, that thing is never going to be addressed. Every single maintainer that cares at all about whether their project is actually useful has some sort of vision for that project. Maybe it's not a super well laid out vision, they don't have a roadmap, but they at least have a goal of what they want the application to be. Without having a vision, that's when you see a project that doesn't really know what it is. It keeps adding in features from various other things, and it's just this big amalgamation of features that you're not really sure why they're together. But I've seen certain maintainers out there not naming any specific names, where that vision can turn from being something to guide the project into being basically tunnel vision. Anything outside of my vision, whether those be bugs or feature requests, they are outside my vision, so anything else just does not matter. And as with what happened with the LTT situation with PopOS and then later with KDE, I hope to see more developers and maintainers actually take that criticism, take a step back, and then think about what was actually being said and decide if maybe maybe we actually need a course correction and maybe there's something here that even though we as the developers and maintainers thought wasn't really a problem, actually is something that should be addressed and then go and actually address those community concerns. Now, I want to make something very clear. Most FOSS projects make basically no money and are just volunteer work. Obviously, you can point at the big projects like OBS, like Critter, like Blender and things like that, but that's basically the minority. Most projects make basically nothing. So don't expect a problem to be addressed in a timely manner. If a developer isn't addressing it and it's been a problem for a month, two months, three months, it's perfectly fine to keep being critical of that and keep trying to bring it to their attention, but don't be surprised if it takes a while to actually be addressed. So while 2022 certainly won't be the year of Linux desktop, we can certainly try to make Linux a more pleasant experience that more people actually want to try out. And that's going to be it for me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers and your pay linked in the description down below. I've also got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere and a gaming channel. Those are down there as well. That's going to be it for me and I'm out. <laughs>